You're listening to the all-new KBLU Radio Network. That's the Blue Raven Network. Visit our website at www.oneblueraven.weebly.com. Often duplicated, but never replicated. You're listening to the all-new You're listening to FOJC Radio, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and teaching the doctrine of Christ to the whole world. Good morning and welcome to FOJC Radio Church. Grab your Bible and your pens and your paper and when two or three are gathered in his name, the Lord is right here with us. So thank you for joining us and here's Brother David. Good morning. And welcome to the November 20th, 2016 edition of FOJC Radio Church. And we are live, live, live this morning. And I am so glad. It's one of the most difficult things in the world to tell me that I can't get on here and do FOJC Radio. And as uh, most of you know, we haven't been able to do that for several weeks because of our computer but we are up and running, and the old pooter has had a work over, and we're running, burning on all burners this morning, and my little bless meter is just about to pop. I tell you, I'm so thankful the Lord is just pouring out blessings in so many ways that He is just overwhelming me. I'm just so grateful to the Lord for all that He's doing, and we're so grateful to each and every one of you that's joining us this morning. And I'm excited about what the Lord has given me to share this morning. Our lesson this morning is entitled, Opening the Gates of Enoch. And I'm going to be bringing the lesson this morning primarily out of the book of Enoch with a lot of other biblical references. And we're going to be dealing with the section of the book of Enoch called the Book of the Heavenly Luminaries, which is chapter 72 to 82, which I think most people would say are some of the most difficult, probably the most difficult section of the book of Enoch. So we're real excited about sharing this. It's going to be some groundbreaking paradigms this morning, and I'm very excited about it. So thankful to have you all on board. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning, and we just have so much to thank the Lord for. People are being saved, they're being set free, and... Uh, Last night on Now You See TV, we were able to interview a young man from England that came out of uh, Freemasonry because of the Now You See TV broadcast. So it's just exciting to see people saved and set free come to the Lord and come to Him with a hunger to know and understand the deep things of God. So we're just so thankful for each and every one of you. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. And then we're going to worship the Lord for a couple moments as we do. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for your blessings that you have poured out upon us and upon all of our listening family. And Lord, we just thank you so much for your blessings and for restoring our computer that we can broadcast this morning. And Lord, we just pray that all of those in these times that we draw close to you because we know we're going to be in for a rough ride in certain times and we know that you are certain you're our rock you're our strong tower and lord just give us the excitement and the joy that comes from serving you we know that the joy of the lord is our strength and lord i feel that joy in my heart this morning and lord just let that blessing be upon all of our listeners as we lift up our heads and anticipate your soon return. Lord, please help Donna this morning to keep everything running smoothly. Help me, Lord, to bring forth your word in clarity and accuracy. And we give you the praise for everything good that happens. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
and worship the Lord for just a few moments this morning, and then we are going to have our lesson this morning, Opening the Gates of Enoch. We're sorry, but because of the YouTube rules, we cannot use my music in these recordings for YouTube. However, if you want to hear the message in its entirety with my music, you can go to our archives, use the same number, and hear the music and David's teachings. Thank you. Here's Brother David. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Enoch chapter 76 and if that sounds strange if we were in the early apostolic church that would not sound strange because in many places in the first and second century and even later the book of Enoch was considered scripture where we can talk about that some morning in more detail and read some of the comments that the early uh, apostolic fathers made but we are going to read this morning from the book of Enoch, chapter 76. This is the section of the book of Enoch called the Book of the Heavenly Luminaries, chapters 72 to 82. And this would be a good morning for our listeners. We have a lot of listeners that don't like to get in the chat, and that's fine. But we're going to have a lot of visuals this morning. And we have down underneath the chat visuals that are going to be very important and very helpful this morning. So if you can, and you might need to refresh to get the most recent pictures, because these are going to be very, very helpful in our understanding this morning. So let's begin in the book of Enoch, chapter 76. And I saw the twelve wide openings in all the directions through which the winds come out and blow over the earth. Three of them are open in the forefront of the sky, three in the west, three in the right of the sky, and three on the left. In other words, the first three are those on the morning side, followed by three in the direction of the north. The last three are those on the left, in the direction of the south, followed by three in the west. Through four of the openings blow out winds of blessing, and through eight of them blow out winds of pestilence, when they are sent in order to destroy the whole earth and excuse me when they are sent in order to destroy the whole earth the water upon her all those who dwell upon her and all those which exist in the waters and the dry land and in our lesson this morning we're going to be talking about a lot of deep concepts and we are going to be talking about cosmology and if you will, let's just start out with a visual this morning. Uh, go down below the chat room, and there is the the first picture is the zodiac of Dendera, which we're going to be talking about. The second picture is the light of Dendera, which we'll also be talking about. And look at the third picture we have here, which is from Logos Bible Software, and it's called the Ancient Hebrew Conception of the Universe. And this model of cosmology is what we could call the flat earth model, which is the biblical concept of the cosmology of the earth. And we see here that the Bible pictures the earth, and above it is the firmament. And we're going to see that the firmament is actually solid. And it's like a dome that is above the earth. And there are waters above the firmament. And above this firmament is where the heaven of heavens and the Lord dwells. And below it, we see the earth. And this ring, or this firmament, uh is actually a solid object. So this is the basic cosmology by which we are going to understand these gates. And when we talk, and when Enoch speaks of the gates, these are actually gates in the firmament that surrounds the earth. So these are literally gates from the her third heaven into the first heaven. And this is going to be a profound understanding when we understand these gates. Now, in the Word of God, the Bible talks about gates. Let's look at it in Matthew chapter 16 
and verse 18. And we know this scripture. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, the Bible says, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is literally the gates of hell, or the gates of Sheol, the gates of the underworld. And you can see here on this model that underneath the earth we have Sheol. And we've done a couple broadcasts. We have them on our YouTube about the hollow earth and what is in the hollow earth. And we've also talked about this on a couple programs with my friend Zen Garcia on the Now You See TV broadcasts. And this is a important. If we don't understand cosmology and the way our earth is laid out properly, we won't understand the spiritual world. And this is what has really been blowing me away. The more we understand the the way things actually are in our world. And the things that I'm telling you this morning, they are not the things that I was taught in school. This is totally contrary to everything that I heard growing up and being taught. But I am the type of person, and I believe I'm talking to the same kind of people, that if the Word of God says something, we're going to believe it. And when we believe the Word of God, and we move out with a biblical understanding, the blessings of God are going to pour out. Now, in the book of Jonah, chapter 2, and verse 6, here's another biblical reference to understand these gates. And what we're going to do, we're going to be understanding this morning the relationship of the gates of Enoch, which are in the firmament that surrounds our earth, the sky dome. There are 12 gates there. There are also 12 gates in the earth that connect to the underworld. We're going to understand the relationship between the heavenly gates, the gates on the earth, and we're going to understand what that means to us. And let me tell you, that means a whole bunch because it's going to give us a perspective on the spiritual world and spiritual warfare that we've never had before. And this is just absolutely blowing me away, I guarantee you. And it'll blow you away also when th these lights begin to come on. And something I want you to notice here at the outset, when we read from the book of Enoch about the 12 gates in chapter 76, four of them poured out blessing. Eight of them poured out pestilence and destruction. That is one-third or 33 percent blessing. Now this is the first and the original construct of Satan and the number 33 of being the imitator of God. He is claiming to be the true blesser of mankind and he is a liar. And this thing plays out mathematically. And in Freemasonry, one of the sacred sciences is mathematics, also astronomy, also architecture. And they pervert these sacred sciences. And understanding the mathematics of this as it goes through, there is a godly understanding as well as an evil understanding. And we're going to be understanding this to an extent that is going to let us see things. I know I'm seeing things this morning a lot clearer in a lot of ways than I ever have before. And I'm about to pop, and I hope I can get this communicated in a way that's at least halfway understandable, because we're really uh, getting into some marvelous concepts, very high and lofty. Our God has so much for us. And in the book of Jonah, chapter 2 and verse 6, he says, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains, the earth with her bars was about me forever, yet thou hast brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. And literally, this word bars, this means that the earth just shut it, its gates and bars behind Jonah. And Jonah actually died. We're going to do a whole lesson on Jonah one morning. I'm going to call it Killing Jonah. And 
it's we'll we'll learn that Jonah really died when Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He really was. He died. He was the perfect type of Christ because he really died. But that's a, another lesson for another time. But the earth actually has bars and gates that go into the underworld. And this is one of the things that we're going to be exploring this morning, the relationship between the gates on the earth and the gates in heaven. Now, scroll up, if you will, and look at the first picture here. And this is the Dendera Zodiac. It it comes, yeah, just scroll down right below the chat. And this is called the Dendera Zodiac. It came from the Dendera Temple in Egypt, the Temple of Hathor. And this is the oldest known Zodiac uh, in existence. And I want to read from the book of Isaiah, chapter 47. And we're going to look at this thing. And we're going to understand the spiritual world. And I studied the Egyptian Book of the Dead more than the average duck about 25, 30 years ago when we read, wrote the Egyptian Masonic Satanic Connection. But since I have understood the true biblical cosmology, I understand just exactly what these guys were doing on the dark side, how they were working their witchcraft and sorcery, and how to combat and stop that in a way like never before. Now, in Isaiah chapter 47, it says, Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so, be thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit at. And in this scripture the practice of astrology is condemned. It's likened unto sorcery and enchantment, and it's absolutely condemned in the Word of God. And what we need to understand is that these ancient astrologers, and that's basically what the Tower of Babel was. It was a ziggurat, and they were astronomical observatories whereby they observe the stars to work their sorcery and enchantment. And this is horoscopes on steroids. It's the actual working of enchantment and ritual magic. Now, look at this Dendera Zodiac. And this came from the Temple of Hathor in uh, Dendera, Egypt. And what archaeologists say is that originally this was not in the ceiling, and the ceiling was hollowed out, and it was put in the temple of Hathor. And the goddess Hathor was worshipped as a calf. And this is what Aaron did when he came out and built the golden calf. He was worshipping the goddess Hathor. That was the pagan rites that the children of Israel learned when they were in uh, Egypt bondage and no doubt these Israelites many of them had been in this very temple and had seen uh, this zodiac that was there now I want you to notice something we just read in the book of Enoch that there were 12 gates that four of the gates brought forth blessing eight brought forth destruction now just look at this and you can see what it is you see the circle that goes around the outside of this this is the firmament. And you can go back and look at the model of Hebrew cosmology. And it's not just Hebrew cosmology. It's biblical cosmology. This is what the Word of God teaches. And we see here that what is being pictured are 12 gates in the zodiac and within the firmament that's around the earth. And you see four of these are depicted as nice little goddess figures, you know, we got four nice little goddesses, and this is the way the Egyptians are representing the four gates of blessing. And you notice that in between the four goddesses, that we have eight other figures making the twelve gates in the firmament. And we see that these are two little creatures, they got like animal heads on, like 
wow, they might be part human, part animal, and they're looking at one another. And these are representing the eight gates in the firmament that bring forth destruction. And this is what Lucifer has done. He claims to be the real 33rd degree blesser. And of course, this 33 degree concept carries all through the secret societies. It carries down. It's the highest degree, the most honored degree in Freemasonry. And this is exactly what we are seeing represented here. And they understood this. They understood that to channel the forces of evil, they had to come in contact with these forces that were coming through the firmament from the third heaven. And some of these forces are good, some are bad. And this is what ritual magic and enchantment is. It's the channeling and the controlling of these forces to work their own ends. And this is an absolute perfect representation of it. Now, let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 78. And we're going to see and ask the question, well, what in the doggone world does that have to do with me? Well, it's got a whole bunch to do with you and me. And it's got a whole bunch to do with how God's people are going to under survive and be blessed in the end time. And here's just a quick one. Let's look at Psalm chapter 78. And what we're going to see is that when God poured out the miraculous supernatural blessings upon the children of Israel when they were wandering in the wilderness, he did it by opening windows in the firmament and pouring out blessing. Now let's read it. Psalm chapter 78, beginning in verse 22. Because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation, though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Now, and in the next verse, he says he caused an east wind to blow in the heaven, and by his power he brought in the south wind. What did we just read in the book of Enoch? That there were the gates in the, the heavens, and that the winds were blowing through the gates. It's right here, you see. When the manna was poured out upon the children of Israel, the Lord opened one of these gates in the heavenlies, one of these four blessing gates, and through this gate, he literally, from that other world of the heaven of heavens, where the Lord is in the third heaven, angels' food. You see, when the Bible says that God opened the door of heaven and sent angel food, that's exactly what he meant. There was an open door in the firmament through which God sent the supernatural provision, and it manifested here in the real world. It was real food that they could eat because the Lord opened this window in the firmament and from the third heaven sent them down angel food that they might eat. And we are going to see that as God's children, we can expect nothing less from our God in this end time when we are looking to him for supernatural provision and preservation. And as we come into this understanding, it is going to enable us to wage spiritual warfare at a level that we've not yet even comprehended. I know it is just um, something that is a paradigm buster for me. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 7 and verse 11. And let's look at it from the other side, that the Lord can open windows in the firmament, and it can be for judgment also. And this is what we need to understand. And this is what the ancient peoples understood also. And in the ancient uh, cosmologies, just think about it. And what we're going to be talking about the Babylonian temple at Esagila. And it was called Esagila. And this temple had 12 gates in it. And every one 
of the ancient pantheons, be it Hurrian, Hittite, Greek, Mesopotamian, they all had the twelve astral gods. There were twelve Greek titans. There were twelve tribes of Israel. There were twelve apostles. There were twelve parts on the high priest. Twelve apostles. There were twelve parts on the high priest. Sorry about that. We had a little loop there. And you see, this number 12 is not just some coincidental understanding, but the people of God and the people of the dark side, they have understood this ancient knowledge of the 12 gates. And while the Lord's people, they had this understanding in the proper way, coming down through the 12 tribes of Israel, through the through the 12 apostles, through the 12 parts on the high priest's bless, breastplate, they understood. And back then, they had such an understanding, they had the Urim and the Thurim. And I mean, they could go to the Urim and the Thurim, and they, we don't know how it works, but this was a uh, something that God gave them where they heard directly from God in Revelation. And it's, uh, it's just an amazing thing. And what we want to see is that it all comes from this understanding of the proper organization of the cosmos, understanding what's going on there so that we can pray with understanding and we can pray specifically in these areas. Now, Genesis chapter 7, verse 11 and 12, the scripture says this, and this is concerning the flood of Noah. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. Now, notice here that the gates were opened from two directions. We've got, we're going to see, Lord willing, before we're done this morning, that there are not only twelve gates in the firmament that surround the earth, but that there are also twelve gates that go from the earth into the underworld. And here we see the Lord opening up not only a window in heaven, but also the gates that open up the subterranean waters that are in the hollow earth. And of course, we know that this resulted in water covering even the highest mountain upon the earth. So these windows in the firmament, just like the book of Enoch said, they can function in the realm of blessing, or they can also function in the realm of judgment. Now, let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, and let's read verses 6 through 8. And I want to talk a little bit about the firmament. And I know that many of our listeners, that they have been studying what we might call flat earth cosmology much more than I. And this is something that I have been looking at ever since last May. Uh, when I did a conference with Rob Skiba, and we got to have dinner, and he was talking about these things. First time I'd ever heard about it. And I never in my life would think that I would ever come to believe that uh, this was, uh, that the earth could be flat, and uh, that we could have a vaulted sky dome over it. But I have come to the place where I am thoroughly convinced that this is what the Word of God says. And I am a real novice at this compared to even some of our listeners and to uh, a lot of the people that are groundbreakers. And it's been my great blessing to be able to be uh, acquainted with Rob and to become good friends with uh, Zen Garcia, uh, who I'll be over on Zen's network this Wednesday over on Endeavor Freedom doing a program with Zen and Gary Wayne. And to be able to share and uh, study these things. And that's what we are. We're on a quest together. And you see, it's okay to study the book of Enoch. It's all right. It's not something that, uh, you know, it's a bad thing. You shouldn't look at that. No, it's a good thing. The early church looked at it. 
and uh, Jesus' brother quoted it, which makes us know that in the Jesus household as a young boy, they had them a book of Enoch, so I guess we could have one too, because Jesus' brother knew about it, and he quoted it from it. And it's okay to study cosmology, and if you don't agree or understand this just like I do at the moment, that's all right. You see, we don't have to agree on everything. We're not making clones here, but we're making disciples that are going to seek after the truth of God and allow the revelation of the Holy Spirit to take us where we've never went before. I've been studying this thing now, uh, the Word of God, since 1972. And this morning, I am more excited about the Word of God than ever before. And I want to know the deep revelations of God. And I want to tell you that right now, God is pouring it out. We're living in those last days where knowledge is increased. And you just need to get under the spout where the glory comes out. Because he is going to pour it out on the hungry, thirsty souls. Not just wisdom and revelation, but the mighty, awesome blessing of the manifest presence of God. It is going to be poured out, and it's being poured out this morning. And my little bless meter is just about to pop to be overwhelmed with the goodness and greatness of God in what he's doing and blessing people and setting people free. And that's what it's all about. Now let's read in the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 6. And you can go back and uh, as we read this, look at this uh, graphic that we have on the ancient Hebrew conception of the universe. And this comes from the Logos Bible software people. And it says here, Genesis chapter 1, beginning in verse 6, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And this is a perfect picture of what the Bible is describing. We see here the earth that is flat with the sea on it, and then we have the sky, and then there's this hard firmament. And what the Bible says is that above this firmament that there are waters also. Now, this isn't what we're told by our priests at NASA. And that's what the scientists are. They are the priests of the New World Order. Now, this is not what the NASA Freemasons are going to tell you. And I come to the place where I've either got to believe the Word of God or I'm going to have to believe what the Freemasons down at NASA are saying. Now, that's an easy one for me. I'm going to go with the Word of God. And the Word of God says that the firmament or our atmosphere which is capped by a solid sky dome of the firmament, something that's solid, and that this separates the oceans, the water under the firmament, and that there are actually waters above the firmament. Now, it's amazing that my friend Zen Garcia, he wrote a book called uh, The Flat Earth, The Key to Decrypting the Book of Enoch. And I could also say that the flat earth is the key to decrypting the Egyptian book of the dead. And in the Egyptian book of the dead, and we saw earlier the zodiac of Dendera, and uh, also while we're in the neighborhood, look at that Dendera light. Uh, this Dendera light has been talked about a lot on the Ancient Aliens program, and this also came from the temple of Dendera where the zodiac comes from. And this Dendera light is believed by many to actually be ancient technology of, if you will, an Egyptian light bulb. And I also believe this is what this is. That it's not just, uh, these people were not just the old dummies that were made out uh, to be in a lot of what were taught in school. These people were more intelligent in many ways. They accomplished things that people today cannot accomplish. But uh, anyway, in the Egyptian Book of the Dead, the king goes into the underworld. And the king gets a boat. And the, king, the pharaoh gets in the boat by which he ascends into heaven to attempt to go to the waters above the firmament. 
You see, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, they had the same understanding of the universe that the Bible did. And so did the Mesopotamians. So did all of these ancient cultures. And it wasn't until Copernicus that we were changed in our worldview of cosmology. And this is something that is a mind-blowing paradigm, and it's something that is not just something curious to know, but it's something very practical that's going to give us a paradigm from which to wage spiritual warfare like never before. Now let's go to the book of Job, and we're going to take our break after this scripture. Uh, Job chapter 37 and verse 18. And this is just a... Boy, do I love the book of Job. I really like the book of Job. And when I came to the understanding that the book of Job was abs was antediluvian, and that this book come across on the ark with Noah, oh boy, that just really opened up a bunch more stuff and was an awesome blessing. But in the book of Job, chapter 37 and verse 18, the scripture says this, Hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong, and as a molten looking glass? Now, we've never thought about the sky as being strong or tangible, have we? I never did until I began to think about the biblical cosmology. But this is what we're told, that the vaulted dome of the sky is tangible. There's a tangibility to it. And I want to read from a commentary on the book of Job. I am blessed to have a huge three-volume commentary by a man by the name of Kleins. It's the biggest commentary ever done on the book of Job. I mean, it tears everything apart. But I want to read his comment here on Job chapter uh, 37 and verse 18. This is what he says. And you'll see that this man is describing the same thing that we see in our little picture here from Logos Bible Software. Just look at the little uh, graphic we have here in the chat, the ancient Hebrew conception of the universe, and I want to read Mr. Klein's comment on Job 37, 18. I'll read the scripture again, then I'll read the comment. Uh, Job 37, 18. Hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong... Yeah. Hast thou with him spread out the sky? Little loop there. Uh, Job 37, 18. Here we go. Hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong and as a molten looking glass? This is Mr. Klein's comment from the Word Biblical Commentary. The picture here is of Hebrew cosmology. The sky is viewed as a solid but thin sheet of beaten metal, a firmament as in Genesis 1-7. Above it are, st are storehouses for the rain, snow, and hail, Job 38-22, that descend to the earth through the windows of heaven, Genesis 7-11. In the firmament are fixed the sun, moon, and stars, Genesis 1-14, and 17. So we can read of the shining of the firmament, Daniel 12 and 3. The beating out of the firmament is most likely conceived of as an act uh, at creation. And with that, we're going to take our first break, this, well, our only break this morning. And we are going to be back with so much more this morning on FOJC Radio, the live version that is... We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to the all-new KBLU Radio Network. That's the Blue Raven Network. Visit our website at www.oneblueraven.weebly.com. Often duplicated, but never replicated. You're listening to the all new KBLU Radio Network. That's the Blue Raven Network.
You're listening to SOJC Radio, where truth in the Word of God is found. SOJC Radio, where you are on the fringe of your Holy Ghost encounter. Welcome back this morning to the November 20th, 2016 edition of FOJC Radio Church. And I just want to say, as I always do, we're so honored that you spend this time studying the Word of God with us. And real good to see Brother M in the chat this morning. You know we love you a bunch, and uh, we love all of you. And it's so good to see you live with us this morning, Brother M. And... uh, I would say he's one of our oldest friends. He's not old. He's just been our friend for a good while now. So we'll just put it like that. But we're glad to see you and all of our listeners. And uh, all of our new listeners. We're getting so many people that are new listeners to FOJC Radio. We're so blessed and just so thankful always to meet new friends. So uh, our uh, something we're going to be uploading. We'll just a little heads up here in probably this week sometime. I'm going to have Sister Donna upload my 1991 Christmas sermon called The Truth About Christmas. And ask yourself, where were you in 1991? And let me tell you, it's smooth as butter and just like a cool summer breeze. You're, you're going to get a kick out of listening to my 1991 The Truth About Christmas sermon. So we'll probably get that uploaded to YouTube sometime this week. But... Let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 24. And our lesson this morning, we're talking about opening the gates of Enoch. And for those of you that aren't in the chat, this would be a good lesson or for you to get in the chat to look at the visuals. Or you can go back later. Even those of you that listen on YouTube, we have many people that listen to the broadcast on YouTube you can go back and you can go to our uh, website and go underneath the chat and see these visuals because I think they're really going to add a lot. But I want to read Exodus chapter 24 and verse 10, and then I want to read John Wesley's comment on that scripture from uh, John Wesley's notes on the Old Testament. And one of the things that uh, I began to realize and um, in... uh, my friend Zen Garcia's book, he went into a lot of what the old commentators said about uh, cosmology. And they believed and understood, many of the old writers, the proper uh, cosmology of the Bible. And uh, this is something that has been lost in uh, to modern believers. And I think it's time to get back to it, don't you? And in Exodus chapter 24, verse 10, this is a scripture that is just overwhelming. But uh, And let's read verse 9 and 10. It says, Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work, of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Now, what this is depicting, and oh boy, uh, Moses and Aaron and the 70 elders of Israel, they went up an earthly mountain, but they didn't just go up an earthly mountain. They went into the very presence of God. They not only saw him, and this was our Lord Jesus Christ in what we would call a theophany. They not only saw him, but they ate and drank with him in a true communion. Now, it says here that literally there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. What this literally pictures is God standing on top of the firmament. I mean, can you imagine when we really realize that there is a solid firmament 
that is over our earth and God is standing on it. And he is looking down at us through this firmament. I mean, my goodness. And this is exactly what the scripture says, that underneath his feet is the work of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. It literally pictures Jesus in his pre-incarnate state standing on top of the firmament, and Moses and Aaron and the 70 elders going up and actually eating and drinking with him there. Now, I want to read John Wesley's comment on this scripture in Exodus 24.10 from Wesley's notes on the Old Testament. John Wesley got it. This is what John Wesley said. He said, But at the bottom of the brightness they saw such as they never saw before or after, and as the footstool or pedestal of it, a most rich and splendid pavement, as it had been of sapphires, azure, or sky-colored. The heavens themselves are the pavement of God's palace, and his throne is above the firmament. And this is exactly what the Word of God tells us. John Wesley got it. And a, a lot of these old commentators, they got it. They understood it. The the Old Testament got it. So I want to get it too. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a tremendous blessing. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 4 and verse 6. In Revelation chapter 4 and verse 6, the Word of God says this. Revelation chapter 4 and 6. And there was, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. Well, guess what this is? This is the firmament again. And literally, the firmament that is this solid construct above our earth, this is literally the floor of the throne room in the third heaven. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And when you think of this, my goodness, this is just awesome, isn't it? That the Lord is not nearly as far away from us as we actually think or have been taught. And it's not like he is in a physical distance relation from us, but in a physical and a spiritual way also, the Lord is much closer than what we have been made to think. Now, let's go back to the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch, chapter 72. And I want to read verses 9 and 10. And these verses speak of the uh, movement of the sun in the heavenlies. Let's just read it. Enoch chapter 72, verse 9 and 10. And also I might want to say that in the different editions of the book of Enoch, uh, some of them that say chapter 72, some say chapter 71. Uh, I've seen this in some of them, and this is one of the problems reconstructing the text of the book of Enoch. And it's at this point where I would distinguish the book of Enoch from other books that have been preserved where we can explicitly determine the text. But yet, the book of Enoch, I believe in my heart of hearts, just like it says, that this is a book that the Lord is giving us for these last days that uh, we can understand things like this in the operation of the spiritual world. Now, let me read these verses here. Um, Enoch 72, 9 and 10. It says, when the sun rises in the east, in the sky, it goes out through this fourth gate for thirty mornings and descends faithfully through the fourth gate in the western sky. During those thirty days, the day daily becomes longer and the night nightly shorter for thirty days. On that day, the day is longer than the night by one-ninth. So the day turns out to be exactly ten parts and the night to be eight parts. And what in the world is that talking about? My goodness. But my friend Zen Garcia has done, uh, and he's the only person I've ever seen to take this and make sense of it. But uh, And you can go to Zen's website 
and he's got videos on this. And literally, it, he wrote a book here. It's called The Flat Earth as Key to Decrypt the Book of Enoch. And literally what Zen says here, and he nails it, uh, and if you read the Book of Enoch, or the Book of the Dead, or any of these ancient texts, uh, if you read it from our understanding of a globular, heliocentric universe, it doesn't make any sense at all. But once you look at it of a biblical flat earth cosmology, it makes perfect sense. And Zen did a video, you can watch it on his website, how that what this is describing, that this is describing the sun above the earth. And as and what it's talking about, there are twelve gates in the heavens, and also that these twelve gates are reflected in the way that the sun moves across the earth like it would be the face of a clock. And as the sun moves uh, it, it's it'll move like in circles that will tighten and loosen and it will reflect gates upon the earth and I know that's a lot it took me a while to really see this and get it and I'm sure I ain't got it all but I'm understanding enough to where I'm getting dangerous let me tell you and um, this is what Zen said in his book uh, The Flat Earth as Key to Decrypt the Book of Enoch on page 250 he said this and he was referencing these scriptures and commenting on them. He said, The two great gates are the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, which is points of reference, guide and limit the sun's revolution throughout the year. Now, I want you to go down again and look at our visuals this morning. And we're going to begin to try to have an understanding of how the gates... 12 gates in heaven relate to the 12 gates in the earth. And as far as I know, and I can just about say this for sure, that uh, we are really Star Trekking here. We're looking at an understanding of the spiritual world and cosmology that I don't think anyone else has ever took a shot at it just like this. And if it wasn't for Zen's work, I would have never seen this. And hats off to Zen and uh, I'm going to bring Zen on, Lord willing, on Now You See TV in the very near future on the Midnight Ride, and we're going to be talking about these things, and I'm just really going to be really excited. But this visual, go down underneath the visual of the ancient Hebrew conception of the universe, and underneath that is a visual called the Twelve Vile Vortexes. And the 12 vial vortexes is a concept that was put forth in the 1970s by a scientist by the name of Ivan Sanderson. And I'll read a brief snippet of what Mr. Sanderson's theory was. And it is a theory, but I think it's a, a very good one. Uh, this is from a book called The Bible and the Bermuda Triangle, and another book that I, the Lord just put in my path back in the 70s, but this is what it says. Sanderson's theory, theory is that there are 12 vortices, whirlpools of electromagnetic aberrations, and these are at 72 degree intervals around the world, making five in the northern hemisphere and five in the southern, with two at the poles. Now, guess where these vortices are? Five of them are in the Tropic of Cancer, and five of them are in the Tropic of Capricorn. Now, if you think that's coincidence, uh, I'll take you out to eat today. I mean, that is just amazing. And what we're seeing here, and these 12 vial vortices, these are the places like the Bermuda Triangle and the Devil's Triangle where strange things happen all over the world. And there are actually places of uh, strange swirls of electromagnetic, electromagnetic energy, and these 12 vortices are the result of the 12 gates within the firmament. I believe this is undeniable. And these places, and 
not long ago we had this mysterious disappearance of the um, Asian airliner. And you can see here, uh, right off Australia, there's what's called the, uh, the Wharton uh, Trench, or uh, something about Wharton. But in other words, this is the place where this Indonesian airliner so mysteriously disappeared. And the History Channel, they did a documentary on the 12 vile vortexes. And there was a, and this is, you can look this up, it's just off the hook. And uh, there was so much controversy about it. And uh, there was one man that was a scientist, and some of these are on the ground, on the earth. And this man went to one of these vortices, and his son was murdered by some kind of an animal while he was there doing the investigation and all kinds of strange stories from this history channel documentary i believe it's called the devil's graveyard and i haven't been able to watch it yet but it was based on sanderson's theory of the 12 vile vortexes and you can also this is something that really trips me out but you can see the five vortices on the left and the five on the right and you can draw if you connect the dots both will make a pentagram and I tell you this is just mind-blowing but this is the understanding that we're beginning to see that there is a connection between these gates in the heavens and these gates in the earth now let's go back to the book of Enoch chapter 76 and verse 14 and I'm going to begin uh, just to give a brief understanding here of why this is important to us and we're, we're just taking baby steps here and we're scratching the surface and this is the type of the lesson that I'm sure many of you are going to take and you're going to see tremendous insights into this that it's going to really open up a bunch of stuff but in uh, the book of Enoch chapter 76 and verse 14 it says thus the twelve openings of the four heavenly directions are completed all their orders all their evil effects and all their beneficial effects have I revealed to you O my son Methuselah now according to the book of Enoch the knowledge of the twelve heavenly gates was revealed to Methuselah the good effects of it and the bad effects of it. Now, the book of Enoch says that this, the book of Enoch, is a book for the last days. And I believe that now the Lord is revealing once again the knowledge of these twelve heavenly gates, the good effects of them, and the bad effects of them. Now, let's go to the Word of God, Job chapter 38, and we're going to begin to see some amazing things, if this isn't amazing enough. But, in the Zodiac of Dendera, there are 12 signs of the Zodiac that correspond to the 12 heavenly gates. And just a couple of weeks ago, we did a lesson, one of our reruns was the Prophecy in the Stars, which is on our YouTube channel. And we talked about how that there is a godly revelation through the stars as well as an ungodly. And... Uh, in, in Job chapter 38, let's read the scripture. Job chapter 38, beginning in verse 30. The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Now, I believe that speaks to the fact that over the north and south pole, it's frozen over because it, it is literally the Lord is sealing off the hollow earth and what's inside. Uh, and we've got a couple shows on our YouTube and on Now You See TV that I did with Zen about the Hall of Worth and all what goes on there. Boy, that's another whole subject. But in verse 31, listen to what it says. Canst thou bind the sweet influence of the Pleiades? Now, the Pleiades is a constellation in one of the twelve gates this is giving out sweet influences or loose the bands of Orion. Can you do that? 
Can you bind the sweet influences of the Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? You see, it's literally talking about binding and loosing the influences that are coming through these 12 gates. Can you loose you up a little manna uh, that came down through the portals like it did the children of Israel? Well, I tell you what, I haven't loosed me up any yet, but uh, I'm not done yet. Just hang on. Uh, In verse 32, it says, Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season... And that word Maseroth, if you look that up, that means the Zodiac. It means the 12 constellations that are in the heavens that represent the... uh, Each one represents one of the 12 gates in the book of Enoch. Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season, or canst thou guide Arcturus and his sons? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? You see, the ordinance of heaven reflect dominion in the earth. Canst thou set the dominion thereof? And you see, we're talking here about spiritual operations that the Lord reveals unto his people that we can begin to understand what causes the good and bad influences in the spiritual realm. Now, Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19, Jesus said this, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now listen to what he said, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth, on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Canst thou bind the sweet influence of Pleiade or loose the bands of Orion? You see, this is what Jesus was talking about. The twelve gates in the firmament binding and loosing these spiritual forces that come through these gates. Literally. uh, I I mean, this is mind-blowing. Now, let's look at a couple more here quickly. James chapter 5 um. James chapter 5, and I want to just think briefly about Elijah. James chapter 5, and I want to read verse 17 and 18. The scripture says here, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth but the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Now, remember... We read the scripture in Genesis about how the Lord opened the windows of heaven and we had the flood of Noah. Well, here we have Elijah praying and he shut the heaven. He shut that gate in the firmament and it did not rain. And this is exactly what Elijah did. He prayed and he bound that window in the firmament. Now, we're going to close this morning with Revelation 11 and 6. And I am challenging us this morning. I am challenging us to go deeper with God than ever before, to believe God in a bigger way than ever before, to take the limits off of what our God can do and the relationship that we can have with him. And in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 6, the scripture says this, concerning the two witnesses, and we also have a teaching on the two witnesses on our YouTube channel, and you'll see that not only are the two witnesses two individuals, which I believe will be uh, Enoch and Melchizedek, but also they represent two groups of people. But you, you can listen to that if you'd like. But this is what it says about the two witnesses, and I believe that a lot of us, we're going to be a part of this. And it says in Revelation 11 and 6, These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Now, the end time remnant of God, they're going to have power to shut heaven. That's what the Word of God says. Well, how are they going to do it? They're going to bind that door in the heavenly firmament. They're going to shut that gate of Enoch. They're going to be able to open that gate of Enoch for blessing. They're going to be able to bind and to shut it. And I'm challenging you this morning that this is the relationship 
that the Bible says the end time remnant's going to have. Listen to what it says. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of the prophecy and have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. The Bible is describing an end time remnant that has learned the understanding of opening the gates of Enoch, of binding and loosing them. My goodness, I don't know what else to say, except to say I'm so glad that we're able to be back live this morning, and I'm so glad for all of you that joined us this morning. And I'm just going to close out in a word of prayer. And like I said this morning, my little bless meter is about to pop. And uh, I'm just so blessed with what the Lord is doing. And I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing in your lives and pouring out revelation and blessing upon you. And he's putting together a wonderful family of God and a wonderful end-time remnant that's going to stand and do marvelous things for him, to do exploits as the book of Daniel said. But let's close out in a word of prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, I'm so very thankful that we're able to be live again this morning. I just pray a marvelous blessing upon each and every one of our listeners. I just pray that you pour out the spirit of wisdom and revelation like you, the Apostle Paul prayed in the book of Ephesians, that you just take us deeper than we've ever been before, that you just pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and you equip us as a people of God that will walk in the full anointing and the full armor of God. And Lord, we just thank you and praise your holy name for everything good that comes forth. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And we will see you next week live, live, live on FOJC Radio Church. God bless you all. Thank you for being a part of FOJC Radio Church. You can contact us at FOJC, Post Office Box 4174, Evansville, Indiana, 47724-4174. Or you can call us at area code 812-473-3735. Or you can email us at Last Days Church at cs.com or you can check out our website at www.fojcradio.com When you get there, all you have to do to listen to our auto DJ that runs 24 hours a day is to click on the radio page. If you'd like to listen when we're live, that's Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Central Time, we have FOJC Radio Church. During the Radio Church, we have several people that join in the chat room, and I also post the scriptures that David is teaching about uh, right in the chat room. So please come and join us. And then, if you'd like to listen to other archives, uh, just uh, go to our main page, click on the archives button and you can choose from many recordings that we've already uh, put on for shared all you have to do is sign up free uh, through for shared it's a very simple process but if you have any trouble just contact us and we'll help you thank you for listening and please check out this channel because there will be more videos to come Thank you for your patience, and thank you for listening. God bless. You're listening to FOJC Radio, where truth in the Word of God is found. You're listening to the all-new KBOU Radio Network. That's the Blue Raven Network. Visit our website at www.1blueraven.weebly.com Often duplicated, but never replicated. You're listening to the all new KBLU Radio Network. Thank you.
replicated, never replicated. You're listening to the all-new KBLU Radio Network, Blue Raven Network.